Hello, welcome to Wild Dreams first tutorial. My name is Alex, and today we are going to see how to build a small radio with a Vometer. First of all, I will sign up with my Wild Dream account with my Facebook, and as you can see, this is my dashboard. You can see that I have no projects, and I have set up two of the boards. As hardware, we will use a Raspberry Pi Revision B, a loudspeaker, an SD card with the Wild system on it, and uh, a Wi Fi adapter specially designed for the Raspberry Pi. So let's plug it in. I will plug in the wireless adapter, I will insert the SD card, and I will connect the speaker and also start the speaker. Last but not least, I will connect the board to the power. So until the board boots up, and we can see it here. We will create a new project, which is called um, Vometer, and we will choose the visual programming language. I will click submit, and the project is here. I will click the project, and we will see how it looks like. The visual programming language is actually a programming language designed of blocks. Instead of writing code, you drag and drop blocks. We have here main.visual and we can see we already have a block with print on screen and the text. The language is actually compiled into Python and you can see the source here. Let's see if the board has booted up. Yes, I can see my board already here. So let's see if this works. I will run this and uh, it will take some time to deliver the program to the board. and now we can run it. As you can see, it wrote hello from Wildedream. Okay, so we want to build a radio, we will delete this block and go to multimedia. First, we have to load the radio stream. I will pick the block, load audio stream from address, so I will choose address, and here we have to insert the address of the radio station. This address is okay, it's called Magic FM. As you can see, this block here has a connector, which means that it actually results in a value that needs to be stored in a variable. So we are going to variables and pick the set item to block. At item, we will make a new variable called sound, and we will attach the loading of the stream to sound. This way, we have the variable sound, which represents our radio station right now. If we go to variables, we can see it here as well. Now that we have the sound, we need to play it. So we go to multimedia and pick play audio stream. I will connect it here and we will select the sound stream. If we go to code, we can see the corresponding code. Well, let's see if it works. We will connect it to the board and we'll wait for the program to start. I will hit run. As you can see, it started and stopped immediately. This is because we actually started the stream, but our program is finishing. So, we will have to uh, make our program wait until the stream finishes. The easiest thing is to put a delay and make the program wait, let's say, for 10 seconds. If we run it now, we can see that the radio starts, but the problem will be that in 10 seconds it will stop. This is because our program stops after 10 seconds. So we will delete the delay and we need a way to find out if the radio has finished or not. So we can go to multimedia and we will see we have a block called audio stream is playing. This block will return true if the stream is still playing and false if the stream is not playing. So we will take this block, we will select our sound and we will go to loops. We will make a repeat and we will repeat 
while audio stream sound is playing. This should be okay. Keep in mind that this repeat is not very good for the board. If we have nothing here, the board will continuously pull for the audio status, which will actually consume all its power. It is enough to pull once a second. So we will put a delay with a one second value. This way, it will check if the audio stream is playing, wait for one second, check again. This should be enough for a radio, and we will start it. And we will hit run. And as you can see, our radio is playing. As it has no limit, and the audio stream of the radio will never stop, we will be able to stop a radio by hitting the stop button here. And we actually stopped it. So this is how you build a radio station. If you want to see it in code, this is the code here. The second thing that we will do is to create a vometer using the LEDs here. The schematics for the uh, vometer is the following. So we have the Raspberry Pi and we will connect 10 LEDs to the Raspberry Pi. This way we will have a LEDs display on the intensity of the sound from the radio. For this, you can see we have a breadboard here with 10 LEDs. Each of the LEDs is connected with a pin to one resistor, as you can see here. So each um, cathode of the LED is connected to a resistor. One pin of the resistor, of each resistor, is connected to the blue line on the breadboard. And the blue line is connected to this cable here. So first of all, we will connect this cable to the ground of the Raspberry Pi. I have here a chart with uh, the pins layout of the Raspberry Pi. And you can see the same chart here. So let's start connecting them. So I will connect the ground to the ground pin, which is the third one here, I suppose. And then I will connect each of the following 10 cables to the pins 0 to 9 of the Raspberry Pi. This is a little tricky. So we will take the first cable, we will identify pin number 0, which is the sixth here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we connect to this one. The second cable will connect to pin number 1, which is right next to pin number 0. The third one and I think this is the third cable, is connected to pin number 2, which is right below pin number 1. Okay. The fourth cable, this one, is connected to pin number 3, which is below pin number 2, I think. Okay. Next. The next cable is on pin number 4, which is right next to pin number Pin number 5 is below pin number 4. Pin number 6 is one pin away from 5. Number 7. 7. Oops. Let's get out. Pin number 7 is 2 pins before number 1. This is really messed up. Pin number 8 is the first, is the second one here. And pin number 9 is somewhere here. Okay, as you can see, this should be the layout. I hope I got them right. As you can see, we have the 10 LEDs. Each LED is connected to a pin of the Raspberry Pi, starting with pin number 0, this LED, and pin number 9, the last LED. So this should be our setup here. So, let's see if we have guys right. First of all, we will try to um, 
light up all the LEDs so that we can check that everything is okay. Lighting up the LEDs is done by using either the set pin block, either the pin mode block. Uh, due to the fact that we have a lot of LEDs, we will use the pin mode. Not the pin mode, sorry. We will use the digital write. We will go to loops and we will take a count and we'll say like this, count i, which i is a variable, from 0 to 9, step 1, and we will have a digital write for pin number i. The value here, we will replace the value with the value 1. Numbers, we we'll go to numbers, pick a value, and we'll place number 1. This way, we will loop i from 0 to 9 and we will write on each pin the value 1. This is good, but this is not enough. We will have to set also the pin mode. Pins on the Raspberry Pi can be either used for input and for output. As we want to light up LEDs, we will have to use them for output. So I will attach a pin mode here and I will make each pin an output. Well, let's start it up and we'll see if every LED will light up. If we are lucky and I have connected the cables well, we should have the LEDs lit. And this is happening. Okay. Now let's do the V meter. Um, I will delete the writing of the value on the pin and I will leave the count with setting the pins mode. The vometer is actually a measure of how strong the sound, the sound is. For this we have a block here which is called stream level. Stream level returns the value, the mean value of the power of the sound. So at the stream we will select our sound stream and you can see it has a parameter scaled to. This is a number uh, and it represents the highest value that the stream level will return. For us, uh, as we have 10 LEDs, the highest value that we want it to return is 10. So we go to numbers and math and pick a number and write 10 to it. As you can see, it has a connector here, so we need a variable to store its value. So we'll pick again a set item block, and we will connect this one. And we will call the variable level. Okay. We will place this here inside the loop. Right now, we have the level of the sound. Let's see how it looks like. Uh, we will print it on the screen first, so I will take a print block, delete this here, and take the variable LED and put it inside the print. Now, on my screen, I should have, once a second, the level of the sound. And we will look at the console here, and as you can see, we have it here. Okay, now let's light up the LEDs. I will delete the print and we will do the following. I will take another count and place it here and we will say a new variable which is called LED. The count will be from 0 to 9 as these are the LEDs that we have and we will go to logic and pick an if. If accepts a condition, actually. And the idea is the following. If our LED value is lower than the level value, the LED will be lit. If our LED value is higher, if our LED is higher than the value than the level, the LED will not be lit. So we will put a condition here. Um, condition should be this one 
and we will say like this if our variable led which takes values from 0 to 9 is less than our variable level that means that we will write the value 1 on the pin number led I will delete this, I will go to numbers pick a number and put the value 1 as you can see the if has a star here and we will put an else to the if if our led is greater than level we will have to shut down the led and for this we will put a digital write on the led with the value 0 so once again we take the level we take another variable which takes values from 0 to 9 which are our pins and we say like this like this if our pin number current pin number is lower than the level then we should light it up otherwise we should not light it up let's have a run and as you can see the LEDs are changing but this is not very nice as you can see they are changing very very slow actually once a second this is due to the delay here instead of doing all this once a second we will say we will do it once uh, 50 milliseconds and now if we hit run we should have a room meter in real time and it should start here you go Okay, so this is our tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. Um, you can take this example uh, when you create a new project. We will post it on the website. Thank you. See you at the next tutorial. Bye-bye.